Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. My name is Tanya, for those of you that are new here, and I am a watercolor artist. So the whole month of October, I've been doing a little mini series of Halloween paintings. So this probably will be the last one since Halloween is right around the corner. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, so to get started, we've got our watercolor paper. I've got three brushes here. They're my Grumbacher paint brushes, a size zero, five, and seven. I have my pencil, my eraser, my water, and I also have my palette here with my Winsor Newton watercolors. It doesn't really matter what colors we're using today, so I'm not even gonna really tell you what colors I'm using. Just pick whatever colors you like. So since Halloween is this weekend, and I had promised that I would be doing a little series of Halloween videos, um, this one might probably be the last since Halloween is right around the corner now. So we're gonna do just three little, um, different little paintings here on this page. So the first one is gonna be a witch's hat. So you're just gonna take your pencil and you're gonna lightly sketch out. You can Google any images of hats. And I'm just gonna pick just a generic, generic witch's hat. And that's gonna be um, the, the rim part, the part that actually sits on the head. And then I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna curve it and bring it back down. And then this part here will be like the part that's inside, you know, that you put your head inside this part of the hat here. So this is the rim, like that. And actually, I think I want to make this one a little bit, come down a little bit more like that. I wasn't really liking that little peak there that I had done. There, that's better. All right, and then let's just give it a little like buckle. And I'm being a little um, hard with my pencil right now, so you can see my lines, but definitely make these a little bit um, lighter or you can go ahead and you can erase it later if you want to also. All right, so that's the first one. Oh, and then you know what? We'll have like a little spider coming down from the hat here. So a little body, and then I think spiders have eight legs. All right. Then the next one is gonna be um, like the witch's little feet, which I thought was really cute. So we're just gonna do like two little legs coming down like this, just make them skinny little legs. And then she's going to have some socks that come out a little bit past her, her legs here. Bring it down like this. And then her shoes, well, we'll curve it like this because that's where the shoe is going to start. And then the shoe's got this little curve here. And you can bring it in like this, give her a little bit of a heel. Like that. So there are these just funny little shoes and then just kind of mimic it on the same side. And you can make any kind of shoe you want. It doesn't have to be like this. I'm just going from just, you know, movies that I've watched, what which is shoes look like, but you can just do any little uh, shoe that you like. And then curve it. Okay. And uh, you can give her socks here a little bit of a pattern if you want. So I'm gonna do kind of just like this triangle pattern here, going up her leg. Okay, and then maybe we'll just do like a big bow coming out like that. All right, so that's all we're gonna pretty much draw uh, for that. So we've got the witch's hat, her little shoes, and then let's do the pot here, her little cauldron. So we're gonna start out with an oval, and I'm gonna make mine nice and round, just because of movies I've seen in the past, they're always usually nice and round. And I'm gonna give it some little legs. You could do straight legs, you could do curvy legs, it doesn't matter. And then it's gonna have all that little bubbles coming up, because she's cooking something in there. And then you can have some of it spilling out if you want to also. All right, so that is all that we're pretty much going to be painting today. So it's the witch's hat, um, her little pot here that she's boiling something, and her shoes. All right, so if you want to go ahead and lighten up some of your pencil marks at this point, you can. I'm not going to lighten up mine too much just because of the camera. I want you to be able to see it. So I'm just going to leave them pretty, pretty dark. All right, so I'm going to pick up my size 
five. And I think I'm gonna do the hat purple. So I'm just gonna grab, probably I've got some violet here on my palette. And I'm thinking I'm gonna mix that with some of my opera pink. So if you don't have these colors, like I said before, don't worry about it. I'm just having fun making this kind of pinky purple color. All right, so I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna start applying it to her hat. Now you can do the wet on wet if you want to, which means you would wet your page first uh, with water and then apply the paint, or you could just do wet on dry. So my page is um, dry, so I'm just doing the wet on dry. And you're gonna to wanna to fill it all in nicely. And always consider that you're gonna have a highlighted side and a shadowed side. So I think I'm gonna make my shadowed side more the right side. So if you want to, you can come in with a clean brush with just water and start picking up some of that paint on the left side. And it's just gonna leave a little bit of a highlight. That's all you gotta do. All right, let's do the rim of the hat too. And again, these are just supposed to be fun, whimsical, little Halloween paintings. All right, so get that nice and filled in. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna drop in a little bit more just on my sh shadowed side here. My page is still wet. Oh, and this is not Arches watercolor paper. I normally use water uh, Arches watercolor paper. This is just a generic watercolor paper, so it might not be absorbing um, as nicely as it would on my arches paper, but that's okay. These are just going to be fun, whimsical little paintings, nothing serious that I'm going to be selling. But if you have arches watercolor paper, you'll probably get a nice, beautiful effect. So just help that along if you want to. I just kind of put a little bit of a darker on the shadowed side, and I'm just pushing it along. Okay. All right, and we're gonna put, uh, actually I'm not gonna do the inside of the hat just yet because I don't want it to bleed with the rim here. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna go on to her little legs. And I think I'm gonna make this, the bottom part of the socks here, I think I'm gonna make them green. So I'm just filling it in and here again, you could do wet on wet, I am not, I'm just doing the wet on dry but you would have a nice uh, blended effect if you did do the wet on wet. I just wanna kind of fill it in at this point, so I'm not too worried about that. So I'm gonna go down to the shoe and just right up to here. So this is the bottom part of her little sock, like that. And then here again, if you wanna start shadowing a little bit, um, I'm just gonna add a little bit more of my green. I'm gonna add a little bit more green towards the inside here of her, her legs, just like that. And maybe a little bit more shadow down here. Blend it in. Okay. And I'm gonna bring, so we, where we have these triangles, I think I'm gonna do different colors. So one of them is gonna be green, so I will be bringing in my green. Let's see, I'll probably be bringing in that same purple and then maybe an orange. Those are nice Halloween colors, purple, orange, and green. So I'm gonna skip over a couple because those are gonna be the other colors. So I'm gonna just fill those in. So let's see, one, two, one, two. So I've got this one. And you could have done the triangles coming in so they like look, so they're like facing each other. I just chose to do it like this, but you can have fun and just play around. You could even do polka dots on the socks if you want to. You didn't have to do triangles, whatever you want. Okay, and let's see. I'm gonna let that dry for a second and I'm gonna work down here. So I'm gonna lighten up just a little bit of my bowl here, just the rim there. All right, and I am going to do the wet on wet technique for this one. So I'm picking up my size seven and I am just gonna get this part of the cauldron nice and wet. And I'm gonna take, you could take black or Payne's gray. You can make this any color you want. I'm gonna do mine Payne's gray. 
and I'm going to start filling it in. Just like that. So I'm doing the edges first. I want a little bit more of a highlighted um, part in the middle here. So I'm just going over the edges. And I'll bring it in underneath where all those bubbles are because some of my bubbles are gonna be spilling over. If you wanna deepen that up, you can. You can go ahead and drop in a little bit more if you want to right now, or you could wait till it dries and drop in a little bit more later. I'm just gonna drop in a little bit now. And then don't forget the little legs here. Like I said, you could have done the legs straight, you could have done like little bunt feet, whatever. I just did these cute little curvy legs, just like that. And if it's not spreading into the middle like you'd like right away, you can always help it along with a nice clean brush. Just kind of pounce it back and forth until it comes together in the middle like that. Okay? All right. So we're going to let that one dry now. We're going to go back to our hat. So I'm just going to be jumping around from painting to painting, just letting one dry and jumping to the next. All right. So if you want to leave it nice and light purple like that, you definitely can. Um, but if you've watched my videos in the past, you know that I like dark, bold paintings. So I'm going to go over it with my little mixture of my purple again. And I'm using my size zero brush right now. I'm just getting a little bit more detailed. I'm going to go over the right side because that was where we had left the, the, um, the shadows. You could help it along a little bit. I'm going to bring a little bit on this side too, just to define it. Like that. There. And then if you want a little bit of water, you could always help that in with just a little bit of water on your brush and just let it bleed together. There. And you can add as much as you want. Just drop it in wherever you think you need a little bit more. Just drop it in. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing down here. So I'm just going to bring in a little bit more of that purpley pink color. Like that. Bring a little bit on the rim over here. And I made a little bit of a darker purple. I'm going to throw in a little bit darker purple up here. And bring it down here a little bit too. Like that. If you want to move to your bigger brush, which I think I will, I'll go back to my size five for the rest of this. And I will add a little bit more over here. I'm just bringing in a little bit more of that violet without the upper pink, just in certain areas, like that, okay? Perfect. All right, so let's go back to the socks now. We're going to let that dry and let's go back to the socks. So as I was saying before, I wanted um, orange and purple. So I'm going to use, since I already mixed up my purple here, I'm going to go ahead and do my purple. So one of the other triangles. I'm using my size zero, just because this is a smaller part of the, um, the sock here. And let's see, so then that will be orange, and then this one will be purple again. And then I think I want her, her shoes to be that um, same Payne's gray that we did down here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to wet my shoes a little bit before I add the Payne's Gray to it. So let's do one and then add a little of the Payne's Gray. Come around that sock. Just kind of trace your little shoe that you made. And then my little shoe goes right back up into this little curve like that. Just like that. Okay? And I'm going to do the same thing to the next one. 
All right, so I'm gonna drop in a little bit more Payne's Gray in certain areas because I want these shoes to be darker. Not the whole shoe, because I do want some highlights on here. So I'm just gonna do parts of the shoe. And the same thing on this one. So I think the sock has dried by now. So let's go ahead and get like an orange mixture. I've just got my, um, this one is my Cad Red Pal. It's kind of like an orangey red. I'm just gonna get that nice and wet in there. And I'm gonna bring orange up onto the sock here too. Still using my size zero for the socks at least. And I'm not gonna continue my painting all the way up. I mean, you can bring these all the way up if you want to, or you could just frame it there or whatever. But this, these are just little samples to show you how to paint it. So I'm just going to be bringing my painting just right up to there. Okay, and I think I'm gonna go ahead and deepen up this green again. So I'm gonna grab my green and bring a little bit more. I just want it to be a little bit deeper in certain areas, maybe like down here where the shoe is. And my shoe is still a little wet, so it's bleeding into it a little bit, but that's okay. It does not bother me. Bring it up a little bit. Super, super cute. All right, so let's go ahead and make the bubbles here kind of a greeny color. Or you could do blue, purple, whatever you want. So I'm gonna get it wet here. I'm using my size seven brush and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna wet wherever those little bubbles are. And I'm gonna bring in my emerald green And I'm gonna start filling it in. Now you're gonna to wanna to leave a little bit of white space in there too. So you could just start going around where all your little bubbles are, even down here if you want to. And then I'm gonna leave a little bit of white space right in here. So that's gonna be kind of like where the highlight is for the bubbles. And we're gonna come in and we're gonna layer that even a little bit more too. So, um, so right now it's fine just to do it like that. Okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put more paint on this part of the pot down here, just to get it even deeper. And you can make this as dark as you want, as dark or as light as you want. We are gonna take our orange, or you could take yellow. Actually, let's just maybe even do yellow. I'm gonna do like a cad yellow. And I'm just gonna lay down yellow right on where that little ribbon or buckle is. Just like that. Okay. And let that dry. And then we're gonna take um, more of a darker violet and we're just gonna go um, more on the inside of the hat here because the inside of the hat would probably be shadowed. Just like that. All right. Now, if you wanna go ahead and darken any part of your shoe here, you can. I am gonna go ahead and just darken this up a little bit, especially this one. The paint didn't take as well to this shoe. And if you wanna go ahead and shadow some of her, um, her little socks even more, you can. You could take a little bit of a Payne's Gray and just kind of go over maybe the inside of her legs here, just cause like where the legs would be touching, it would be shadowed. So you can just put a little bit of a shadow. So I'm just going down it with some um, very light Payne's Gray. And if you also like to just put a little bit of a ground under her. Now my shoes are still wet. It's probably gonna be bleeding right into the ground here, um, but that's okay. That way you can see where the ground is like that. So my shoe was still wet. Obviously you wanna probably wait till your shoe is nice and dry, um, but that's all right. These are just little samples to show you. All right, I am gonna start adding a little bit more green to the bubbles down here. I'm gonna get that nice and dark. 
I'm just using like an emerald green. I think it's my, my Windsor green blue that I'm using. And some of my bubbles were still wet. If they if it wasn't wet, you could have gone ahead and just wet this again. Very, very cool. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing and put a little bit of a ground down here too. Just so it doesn't look like it's floating into space. So I'm just taking a little bit of Payne's gray or black. And I think I am going to make these little um, these little ribbons here, these little ties, orange. So I'm taking my zero brush with a, just a little bit of water, mostly paint, on my, my brush here, just so it doesn't get all too watery and then it'll just bleed everywhere. So I wanted that to be a little bit more of a crisper line. Let's do the same thing on this one. Just gonna do some little ties, a little string hanging down like that. So cute. And you know what, let's go ahead. I feel like it needs a little bit more of a bow, even on the inside of her leg like this. Like that. Oh, that's really cute. All right, let's see if our yellow is dry. Uh, yeah, it's pretty dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take my Payne's Gray or black, whatever you have, and I'm gonna do the buckle right in the middle. Now just make sure that your yellow is dry. And I don't have that much water on my brush. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just make a little buckle. Okay. You could have even done that with a pen later on if you wanted to. And then don't forget about the little spider. So. I'm gonna come down, do his little body here. If you wanna do this part with a pen, you could do that also. I'm just using my size zero. Just make sure you don't have a lot of water. Oops, and I kind of do have a lot of water on my brush. So it might be easier with a pen. And then you could do that little line coming down. All right, I'm gonna start shadowing this hat a little bit with some Payne's Gray. You could just leave it there just like that if you want to, but I'm gonna bring a little bit of Payne's Gray in here now, just to shadow it up. And let's bring a little up here. And let's bring a little bit down here. Actually, a little bit more than that. So this is the inside of the hat that goes on her head. So that inside is going to be a little bit more shadowed than down here. So if you have a little bit of too much paint on here, you can always lift it up a little bit. So like the rim down on the bottom is going to be a little bit lighter. So I'm just going over it with water and I'm picking it up. All right, let's blend that in a little more. And I think I'm going to be bringing in some spiders around this, but I want to do that with my pen later. So um, at this point, actually, this shoe really bled into the ground there. So let me go ahead and just do this shoe one more time. There. That's better. I'm going to go ahead and dry this really quick, and then we're going to use a little bit of our bleed proof white on this. Okay, so I went ahead and I dried this. Um, I am going to take my um, my Dr. Martin uh, Blue Proof White, and I'm going to take a generic paintbrush. You don't want to do this with your good paintbrushes. And I am just going to use this one. And actually, I'm, I'm using my good one because it's um, not so good anymore. I do have to get a new one. So, um, But if you have a generic paintbrush, definitely use your generic paintbrush. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put some highlights on this um, hat here. And I'm going to come in and I'm just going to do a little bit on her rim. And if you want to mix a little bit of white with your bleed proof white, I mean a little bit of water with your bleed proof white, it will, um, it will just lay down a little bit smoother. Just don't use too much water because then um, it dilutes it. And let's do a white buckle. So we're going to fill in that buckle.
just like that. And let's go ahead and put a little bit more of the highlight on the hat here. And let's see, maybe a little highlight on the shoes. And let's see, mm, we could do a little bit of a highlight on the outside of the socks here. Like that, that's cute. And we can go ahead and um, a little tip here is if you don't want to, um, if you want a really nice polka dot, use the uh, back of your um, paintbrush. And then I'm just going to put like little polka dots on this. Just like that. And it gives you nice little polka dots. All right. And don't forget to wash it off. And I'm going to take my archival um, ink, my pen here. Let's see. I'm going to take my size three. So it's the um, the Micron brand that I'm using here. It's the archival ink. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of um, just go over, like maybe do like a little bit, give a little bit of shadow, like on the ribbon here of her shoe, of her socks. And uh, let's see. Oh, you know what? I want a little spider dangling down. So I'm going to do a little bit of a little spider here. Just like that. Coming down off the shoe like that. And we can also go ahead and put a little bit, bit of bleed proof white on that too if we're not seeing it too well. Um, and then let's go ahead and give some like steam is coming out. So I'm just doing some swirlies in here. And then we could do a couple like that. Oh, and I wanted to do a few spiders. So we could do a couple little spiders. So it's just a little circle with the legs. And there's gonna be a buckle here on the little hat thing here. So I'm gonna do this like little buckle and then those little holes where the buckle would go in those little holes. And let's put a little detail on this hat. So I'm gonna come down with some lines, maybe Just little lines like that. And you can give this, you could even trace the whole thing if you wanted to. I think I will just trace the whole thing. But you don't have to if you don't want to. You could just do little, you know, little uh, shadows here and there. All right. And then if you want to, at the very end, um, you can um, do like some splattering. So I will get my, let's see, I'm gonna get my purple. Since I've got my purple here going, I'm just gonna get it nice and damp, make a nice little puddle. And then you're just gonna take one paintbrush and you're just gonna splatter, just like that. All right, so what you could do is you could cut these into individual little um, paintings and frame them, or you could just leave them like that. And if you want to actually, you know, and I might do it, is bring a little bit of highlights even in those bubbles. So if you want to take a little bit of the white and do some little swirls inside the bubbles here. So I'm using the bleed proof white again and I'm just making little swirlies just like that. And you could do a little bit of a highlight on your pot. And if you want a little highlight on each spider, and there you go. Just three simple, whimsical little Halloween paintings. Thanks so much for watching the video. I hope you liked it and learned a little something. And if you did like it, please give me a thumbs up and you can make a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to subscribe if you want more videos like this one. Have a great day. Bye.